So let's begin where we left off last time, talking about the heat capacities, uh, the molar heat capacities. And these two can be uh, brought together and related. And uh, can do this thinking about the difference between the two. So we have that the, uh, the uh, constant pressure molar heat capacity can be related to the change in the enthalpy as a function of temperature. And the constant volume heat capacity related to the uh, change in an internal energy. And uh, you know, let's just let's just let our molar terms here equal one throughout. At the end of the day, it's just going to get carried through, uh, and uh, we'll divide divide through by them. But uh, okay, so we got this. And then recognizing that the uh, enthalpy is going to be d by dt u plus pv, distributing that dt and uh, noting that the uh, pressure is constant. So there is no change in pressure with change in temperature. We get um, du by d t p plus p du by d t p and then uh, looking at this we have the internal energy that can be written as a function of the volume and temperature so we can write our total differential du is equal to du by dv t dv plus du, oops, sorry, partial dt dt, constant volume, going through and multiplying this by d over dt, we get du by the v constant t dv by dt constant p plus du by dt constant v dt by dt which is one is du by d t p. Okay, so taking these and substituting in CP and substituting in CV as a function of T. And then further substituting
du by dt p we're able to achieve um let's write this cp minus cv is equal to du by dv t dv by dt p that's from there plus du by dt v that's from there now put in that term plus p du by dt p now minus cv which is du by dt v okay those cancel And we can consolidate to give us CP minus CV is equal to, uh, got a common term in both of those, DV, DT, constant P, DU by DV, constant T plus P. Well, so your textbook leaves off the derivation at this point, uh, but let's uh, step through the next couple steps here. We have an ideal gas and that is by definition, do you, IDV is zero. So for an ideal gas, the internal energy is entirely determined by the temperature. Uh, this is not the case for real gases, however, but for an ideal gas, we got this. And what that means is it means that this term is going to go away. And that leaves us with Cp minus Cv is equal to is equal to P dv dt p. OK, and again, using an ideal gas, v equals rt over p. And, and by the way, when I got rid of that uh, mole number here, that would go away over here. This is where uh, if we let the mole stay here, then we'd have an N and that and that would cancel out. But uh, anyway, that's, let's just continue. Uh, right, which gives us dv, dt p is equal to r over p, which means cp minus cv is equal to p r over p is equal to r. So we have the molar constant pressure heat capacity minus the molar constant volume heat capacity 
equal to R. This also means that CP is larger than CV for all systems. But this is what we find useful, particularly when dealing with ideal gases or near ideal gases, right? Situations in which this can be approximated as true and we can approximate PV equals NRT. So now let's consider, let's consider reversible changes of state in the system. And by reversible, I mean that we're going very, very slow in small increments so that the system is essentially in static equilibrium at each point. Uh, the way to think about that really is just to think about a, a situation in which, well, the example that I think of is a, a block of wood and it's being moved. And in making this, we move it so slow that there is no friction. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that this type of process that's very slow in quasi-static equilibrium the entire time is not spontaneous. Moving from here to here does not occur spon spontaneously. Another way to think about it is to think about yourself on some energy curve, say temperature pressure, and you can have you know, volume or internal energy or what have you, and you've got your energy surface. At all times, you stay on the same energy surface meaning you can always come back to the original point. Now, it turns out, and we're kind of foreshadowing here, there are multiple of these surfaces. And in fact, you've got layers and layers of these surfaces on top of each other. But if you pass from one of these layers to the next, it becomes irreversible. And it becomes irreversible due to a change in the entropy. And we haven't talked about that yet, but what you should know is that a reversible process is not spontaneous and you're staying on the same surface in your equation of state at all times. So you can always come back. So let's, let's talk about uh, a couple types of transitions. One type is a type where the system absorbs no energy or no heat, right? That means work only, and we call this an adiabatic transition. And in this case, an adiabatic reversible process. Uh, now, there's, again, to remind you, there's lots of types of work. We're only talking pressure volume here, uh, but you can have other adiabatic processes using other work. So. Let's go back to the first law of thermodynamics. 
del Q minus del W is equal to DU. Okay. Well, that we've just outright set to zero. Our work, we're going to use pressure volume work. And this will allow us to use PV equals N. Ah, let's try nicer writing. PV equals N RT. And RDU is N CV DT. So this gives us N R T over V D V equals N C V D T. N is going to go away, so we don't have to think about those anymore. And we have this expression. Now, something I do want to point out here, and again, this is a This is something that I found confusing when I first started was the fact that here we're varying V and here we've got a constant volume. Well, remember this constant volume heat capacity, that's just a number. I mean, that is you know, a measurable quantity. So, you're allowed to take and substitute in known expressions for differentials as needed. And that's why we're able to put this type of expression together. Now let's uh, continue. Whoop, I made a mistake here. Uh, that negative sign that has to be here as well. Okay, so let's uh, move my temperature over to that side. And this gives me minus R over V dV is equal to CV over T dT. Integrating both sides from state V1 to V2, T1 to T2. We get, whoa, we get minus R natural log of V, V1, V2 is equal to CV natural log T from T1 to T2. So that is minus R natural log V2 minus natural log V1 is equal to CV natural log T2 natural log V T1 uh, using the relationship between logs we get natural log of V1 over V2 and again, I'm gonna put that positive through uh, to the R is equal to natural log T2 over T1 CV. So I'm gonna raise both sides to one over CV, which will give us and uh, take the exponent. This gives us V1 over V2, R over CV is equal to T2 over T1. And we know that CP minus CV is equal to R, 
which means that CP over CV minus one is equal to R over CV. So that's gonna be that. And we're gonna define gamma as CP over CV. which means that V1 over V2 gamma minus one is equal to T2 over T1. And using PV equals NRT to there, we get uh, V1 over V2 gamma minus one is equal to P2 V2 over P1 V1. I can then multiply both sides by V1 over V2. And we get V1 over V2 gamma is equal to P2 over P1, which is P1 P1, the gamma is equal to P2, V2 to the gamma. And this can only be true. That whole thing. If this is equal to a constant. So this is an expression that is a consequence of an adiabatic transition. And this is a reversible adiabatic transition. Okay, so that's, that's one type of transition. Let's look at another. If instead of uh, adiabatic, what if we had an isothermal transition? Et is equal to zero. Well, we have an ideal gas. And we said that the change in internal energy only depends on the change in temperature. It doesn't depend on the change in volume, right? And that's true for an ideal gas, but that also means that when, whoop, it also means that when dt is equal to zero, du is also equal to zero, which means du is equal to del q minus del w is equal to zero, or the change in heat or the heat that flows into the system is equal to the work that's done by the system. And we're letting our work be pressure volume work, PDV, where P equals N R T over V. So integral V1 to V2 N R T over V dV is equal to N R T natural log V2 over V1. We saw that from before. Let V equals R T over P. This is also then equal to N R T natural log P1 over P2. So when you have a reversible isothermal 
expansion, you wind up with Q is equal to W. So the heat flowing in is equal to the work being done is equal to N R T natural log V T over V one, which is also equal to N R T natural log of P one over P two. And that's a consequence of this type of expansion. So let's work an example. And we'll have an example of uh, an isothermal, a reversible isothermal transition and a reversible adiabatic transition. So let's say we start out in the state V1 is equal to 10 liters. T1 is equal to 25 degrees Celsius. And P1 is equal to 10 atmospheres. And this all undergoes some transition to state V2, T2, and P2. And P2 is one atmosphere is a pressure. So there's a, a dramatic drop in pressure. And, you know, we'll use the standard, the standard uh, approximations that we have an ideal gas with CV is equal to three halves R and uh, the heat capacity doesn't change with changing temperature, which is actually not a terrible approximation if you are uh, within a, a relatively limited temperature range is, is more or less constant. Okay, so let's begin with an isothermal reversible expansion. Okay. Well, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's get N is equal to P1, V1 over RT1 is equal to 10 ATM, 10 liter over 25 plus 273 Kelvin times. And we got to pick the proper quantity here for R. Uh, R, and that is 8.206 times 10 to the minus 2 ATM L over K mole. So that will cancel out units and leave it with mole. And we get N is equal to 4.09 mole. Okay. So isothermal reversible. Let's go back up here. Okay, so we've got this set of expressions. In order to use that, we need to have V2, P2. Well, we can do that because we have P, V equals N, R, T. The constant because of no change in temperature, and that's equal to a constant. Then P1V1 is equal to P2V1 
two. So V two is equal to ten ATM, ten liters over one ATM is equal to one hundred liters. And then we can have Q is equal to W is equal to N R T natural log P one over P two is equal to N R T natural log V two over V one. And this is gonna be uh, 10 over one. This is gonna be 100 over 10. Everything works out self-consistent. There's a little star there. And when we substitute in the numbers, we get Q equals W equals 4.09 mole times 8.314 joule per Kelvin mole times 25 plus 273 natural log 10 Q equals W equals 2.33 times 10 to the four joule. Okay, now it's an ideal gas. So dt equals zero implies du equals zero. And we have uh, to get the change in the enthalpy. There's two ways to go about this. One is to say CV equals three halves R. CV equals N. CV equals N three halves R. CP minus CV equals R. So CP equals N, CP minus N, CV equals N, R plus N, three halves R and integral DH from H1 to H2 equals, uh, well, our delta H uh, is equal to CP dt t1 to t2 is equal to, well, CP delta t zero. So delta H is equal to zero. And another approach is to recognize that delta H is equal to delta U plus delta PV and P2, V2 is equal to P1, V1. So that's zero, that's zero. So the entire expression is zero. Okay. So this is what we get for uh, an isothermal transition. Now let's look at an adiabatic transition or reversible adiabatic. All right, so now it's adiabatic. So, oops. Uh -oh. 
dq equals q equals zero. If we go back up in our notes. We have this expression that comes about for a reversible adiabatic transition. So we come down here, we say P2 V2 gamma equals P1 V1 gamma equals constant. V2 is equal to P1 V1 gamma over P2 is equal to 10 ATM, 10 liters to the gamma over one ATM. I'm gonna raise all this to the one over gamma using gamma is equal to CP over CV is equal to R over CV plus one is equal to two thirds plus one is equal to five thirds, right? Because CV is equal to three halves R. So substituting in five thirds, we get V2 is equal to 39.8 liters. Um, using P2, V2, and R equals T2, and we know N. So we've got uh, one ATM, 39.8 liters divided by 4.09 mole. And again, selecting the proper value for uh, R, 8.20 times 10 to the minus two liter atmosphere per mole. K, T2 is equal to 119 K. And continuing, delta U is equal to integral u1 u2 du is equal to the integral cv dt equal to the integral n sorry uh, equal to cv dt is equal to n c v dt from T1 to T2. So this gives us delta U is equal to three halves R119 minus 273 plus 25. So that's uh, T2, that's T1 times 4.09 mole delta u is equal to minus 9.13 times 10 to the third joule. And our definition for the enthalpy delta h is equal to delta u plus delta pv is equal to uh, delta U plus N 
RT2 minus NRT1. I mean, you could substitute in P and V, but it's a lot easier to only have one. Uh, that's equal to minus 9.13 times 10 to the 3 joule plus 4.09 mole times 8.314 joule per mole Kelvin and uh, 119 minus 290. Eight delta H is equal to minus three zero four three joule. Okay, so there's numerical examples of the implications of uh, reversible isothermal expansions or reversible adiabatic expansions.